Hello everyone, I'm Buffy1322, and in this video we're going to be looking at everything that's bad about GTA's latest Mercenaries DLC and why, in my opinion, it's the first DLC in the history of the game that we would have been better off not having. This video is brought to you by Bruffy.com support. Head to that link for all sorts of information on how you can support my channel, from links for direct support to referral codes, and even an article on things you can do to help your favourite creators. So obviously the main thing has been Rockstar removing nearly 200 cars from the websites, simply making them unavailable for people to buy. I covered this in the previous video last week which basically went over everything but I will add to that one of the worst parts about the whole thing is basically the blatant lie that they told, trying to gaslight us by saying they removed lesser used vehicles to improve the browsing experience and then removing very well used and popular vehicles while leaving stuff behind that's rarely used as well as putting in no effort to actually improve the browsing experience with better filtering or even an A to Z sorting option. You know, if you're going to be dicks and remove cars to put behind a GTA Plus paywall and reverse drip feed them back to us, at least own it. They really do think so little of us if they expect us to believe the bullshit way they tried to justify it. Also note that it was mostly the older, cheaper cars that got removed, meaning newer players don't have those cheaper options anymore and have to buy more expensive stuff. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they brought those cars back with updated pricing to bring them in line with modern prices. Now that would be truly horrendous. It's also clear that they didn't really think it through, since on Social Club for example, the cars list the place you can buy them, except that you can't now. And of course those on old gen or PC don't even have GTA Plus or the car sharing mechanic in the car meet to be able to get them in other ways. They're quite literally unavailable on those platforms. Other issues related to cars include the drip feed. With only four cars, two identical cycles and one helicopter, they've got enough drip feed to last until December, if they release one vehicle per month. And I really do imagine that that's what they'll do since the Brigham is likely to be a Halloween car and they can then offer whatever new car is available that month for free to GTA Plus members. Everything is basically just geared towards GTA Plus now it seems. The rest of us will no doubt get a rotating selection of cars they removed every week for the rest of the drip feed. Reverse drip feed is if in full effect here. Then there's the issues with the new monstrosity. You can't use weapons if you've applied any interior mods. You can't change the license plate. It has Imani Tech armor, but it's associated with a roll cage modification rather than being its own option. Parts of the rear wheel remain on the car after logging back in if it's previously been removed. Oh, and the window plates add traction like a spoiler, which obviously isn't anything new, but I figured I'd add it to the list anyway. The Rattel seems to want to clip its wheels into the ground and get stuck if you crash it in the right way, and HSW continues to be added to new cars, completely missing the point of it existing to make old cars better and more competitive. You know, you don't need HSW to make a new car fast. It can just be made fast from the start. <laughs> That's not to mention HSW prices seeing a significant increase in this update. Previously, if a car was expensive, the HSW upgrade was relatively inexpensive, with the opposite being true for cheaper cars. Like the Cyclone 2 costs 2.2 million and the HSW upgrade for it was just under 500k, whereas the 60k to buy Sentinel XS had its HSW upgrade set to just under 1.4 million. With these cars, with this DLC, the cost of the cars and the HSW upgrade are both sky high. The Stinger TT costs $2.4 million, which is in a similar ballpark to the Cyclone 2, but its HSW upgrades $1.4 million. After various other upgrades, that brings the total cost of the car to over $4 million, which is completely insane. And it's a hidden cost as well, since you can't see the HSW upgrade price until you've already bought the base car. It definitely seems like a case of wanting to have their cake and eat it too, and the insidious way that the price has been increased not for the base version of the car but for the HSW upgrade instead, it's not great. Anyway, let's move on to jobs now because this update also saw the complete destruction of a staggeringly large number of races, including some of Rockstar's own created stunt races. So the long and the short of it, and to also purposefully oversimplify it for the sake of time, 
is that there's two versions of the GTA job creator, one for everyone and one for the game devs. The devs get access to a wide variety of settings and importantly more props that us normies don't get the ability to use. Over the years though, those props have found their way into jobs by various means across all platforms. This isn't just a PC modding thing, Xbox and PS5 started getting access to these hidden props via jobs that would have them all placed on the map. Any creator who wanted to use them would simply make a copy of that job and be able to use them like any other prop since they are actually in the creator, they're just hidden from non-devs under normal circumstances. The fact that these props have been used in various jobs with no issues for the last few years is essentially proof that there's no real reason for the arbitrary restrictions that Rockstar place on them. They've been used for years now to create incredible race experiences with absolutely no problems. And a lot of the props were useful especially to race creators. As an example, it, it, there's a number of props that could only be used in arena jobs that served useful functions in races such as apex props and decorations. There's no real reason these props were restricted to only arena jobs beyond Rockstar simply deciding it to be the case. And while Rockstar have made some arena props available in other game modes with this latest update, it's less than half of the total selection that's actually available. So it's basically a case of Rockstar having arbitrary restrictions on race creators' abilities to actually create top tier jobs, those creators finding a way around those arbitrary restrictions, and no problems occurring from that. Everything was basically just fine. Rockstar did used to maintain a block list of props that they would add to from time to time for various reasons, and if a prop was used in a job that was then added to that list of blocked props, it would turn into a blue fence. But obviously it's been years and multiple DLCs with these hidden props being used, and they were never added to that list. However, with this update, Rockstar changed from using a block list to an allow list. Instead of having a list of props that couldn't be used, Rockstar now have a list of props that can be used, and this has had some dire and ironic consequences. First off, almost all hidden props that were used for years by creators weren't added to the list, and have since been turned into blue fences overnight. Apart from the small amount of arena props that they actually made available, most of the props in those jobs which contained the collection of you know hidden items have basically disappeared. And obviously this affects every single race that ever used any one of those props. Road sections, grandstands, decorations, lights, all now blue fences. Races that took creators multiple tens and sometimes hundreds of hours to lovingly craft and refine into standout experiences have simply been destroyed. And it's put the creator community honestly on its last legs. There was no nuance in terms of old jobs can stay as they are, but any new jobs won't be allowed to use the props going forward. It was simply a complete nuking of all existing jobs. So if you're racing around and come across any areas of tracks that don't look right, this is why. However, the ironic part of this is that Rockstar managed to break even their own jobs with this change. Certain props have had updates over the years, so it's the same prop but basically a newer version which probably is a, like a, a minor fix somewhere on it. But a lot of older racers still use the original version of the prop, including some of Rockstar's own tracks. And Rockstar forgot to add these older versions of some props to their new allow list. If you load up Rockstar's stunt forest track, you'll be met with a piece of the track completely missing and once again turned into a blue fence. This change has also broken the original versions of some of the tracks Rockstar have added to the community series jobs, as well as plenty of, for want of a better word, legit tracks that used regular props that haven't been added to their allow list. And why? You know, for what reason? Like I said, the fact that these props have been used for years now without issue is proof that there's no reason for such restrictions, and to go full nuclear on it, decimating tens of thousands of races in the process, including their own, in a 10 year old game where the creator community is honestly the thing that's kept it interesting for so long, is a massive slap in the face. It's unlikely we're ever going to see this reverted and have those jobs restored, 
and it feels like it was the final nail in the coffin for a lot of people in the community community. They're simply not going to go back and try to fix hundreds of jobs, nor will they want to create new ones after this. And again, when there was no harm being done from this, it's just such a massive shame. There is a suggestion for a ticket that you can submit to Rockstar from the Content Creator Hub Discord community to try and get some of these issues fixed, which I'll leave a link to in the description, but it's just a shame. We also of course had some new bugs introduced with the DLC and some of them were particularly egregious and were definite evidence of a significant lack of quality control or care to anything Rockstar do with GTA Online these days. The major one was that the MOC reverted to stock when it was touched, removing any upgrades applied to it and deleting your currently active vehicle. It's insane that this was even a thing and it didn't matter if your current vehicle was the new $7 million plane, it would simply get deleted. It was also possible to put the Avenger into stealth mode, apply autopilot, jump out and forever be off the radar constantly. You were able to do just about anything you wanted and not be seen on the map permanently. Another thing was that one of the first items on the patch notes was them telling us that they added snow weather to the race creator yet it was nowhere to be found. Thankfully these three things have all been patched with background updates, but some things haven't. For example, there's no HSW option in off-road races. They added the first HSW off-road vehicle with the monstrosity, but forgot to add the option to the race lobby to enable or disable HSW vehicles for off-road races. So to get it to work, you have to set enable or disable on another class and then go to off-roads for the race selection. And a new one that's been reported is that supposedly you're, if you're hosting a session and you start a job playlist, you'll be rewarded with an error screen. It's just crazy that they're happy to push GTA Plus with their brand new splash screen on the main menu and by taking cars away to pad their offering, but they don't put the care and attention into the game that makes it worth any kind of subscription. One new bug that's caused me to make a last minute edit to this video to add this in because it's happened just today is that supposedly there's a random bug now that's causing the insurance on vehicles that you own to be uh, removed. So if you have a vehicle that you uh, get, you know, destroyed, it might randomly not have insurance on it due to this bug and you lose the car forever. You contact Rockstar Support about it, they've got no record of it and that car is just gone. So be very careful, to be honest, I'm just not going to play the game, I think. And finally, we come to some annoyances. Things that aren't necessarily broken, but are further evidence of Rockstar's, honestly, contempt for their player base. The newest thing is that transferring your character to PS5 or Xbox Series X now no longer deletes your old gen character on PS4 or Xbox One. Now, this is a good change, and it's actually how it used to work on the transition from PS3 and 360 to PS4 and Xbox One. But it's a big middle finger to everyone who transferred in the year and a half before this update and lost their progress on the old platform. This should have been a thing from the start. I actually contacted Rockstar Support to see if this new change in policy allowed me to get my old character back on PS4, but of course the response was as you might expect. The missions aspect of this DLC is basically a reskin of the contract DLC. Uh, they even use the same terms for the shorter one-off mission difficulties. While in general this isn't a problem and we know that the game is kind of on its last legs and content is being reused by a probably small team, the quality has taken a nosedive. You can even just hover in one of the missions to finish it easily. The payouts aren't that good either considering the enormous cost to enter these missions with having to buy the Avenger and all the extras. The cannons on the laser and the hydra have had a big nerf, probably to make the new expensive plane look better in comparison. Speaking of the new F-160 Raiju, it's basically impervious to regular bullets. Payphone contract cooldowns went from 20 minutes to 48 for some reason. At least it could be skipped with a game restart, but still annoying. In the new character progression tiers, not everything you've previously done counts. For example, I've already done over 100 security contracts, but none of it was counted and I'd have to do another 100 for tier 4 of that progression. Now, I really like the idea of these progression items, but not backdating everything when the records are there for most of these things is a killer for me. We still don't have the UI safe zone size slider which dictates how close the map for example is to the edge of the screen on PS5. 
every other platform including PS4 has it but PS5 doesn't. The Itali GTO Stinger TT is a bloody stupid name. It's actually just called Stinger TT in the game files and because of that it's listed with all the other S vehicles in the job menu not with the other Italis. That's because custom cars are sorted by the name in the game files while stock versions are sorted by their in-game names. It's also why for example the Sterling GT can be found with a Felter since that's called Felter 3 in the game files. Now this has been the case since release but I still find it hilarious and it's honestly getting worse the more vehicles that they add. We still don't have the ability to choose weather in stunt race lobbies. The first page of the job menu is still broken when trying to cycle back to it from page 2 or further. The controller input glitch on Xbox is still not fixed. And last but not least, PC still doesn't have the expanded and enhanced version of the game over a year later. And this is all why I genuinely feel it would have been better to not have a DLC at all. Maybe add the cars and be done with it like the olden days of DLCs. You know, as bad as Arena War was, which previously I'd have said was one of the number one worst DLC that this game has seen. I think this is the first time I've ever thought that the game would have been better off if the DLC hadn't happened at all in 10 years of playing. The last DLC wasn't great, but we at least got some good quality of life updates and decent vehicle additions. And to be honest, the missions weren't too bad. It was more the fact that they split it up so much with a crazy drip feed. This DLC feels more like a backward step than forwards with content removed and broken and even more insidious tactics to shoehorn people into GTA Plus while at the same time putting in less and less effort on the game itself. And to be clear, I totally understand Rockstar putting less attention to GTA Online as they continue to ramp up towards a GTA 6 release. And I honestly don't blame the devs working on the game for any of this. They're likely putting in a ton of effort but have one hand tied behind their backs because the decision makers at the company are doing the opposite of what the community ever wants. A small team of overworked developers who probably aren't given the time or resources to properly test everything they're making aren't to be blamed for how bad this DLC is. It's the suits who make the decisions to remove cars, who decide to make the game experience worse for the rest of us to make GTA Plus look better, who continually want to reap the benefits of revenue from this game that has made multiple billions of dollars without putting in the investment to actually improve the experience. What a shame that this is what we get to coincide with the 10 year anniversary of the game. The last 10 years certainly have been a roller coaster, but I think this is the lowest moment of any of it. I've not bought shark cards for a long time, I still haven't purchased GTA Plus, and I've been driven towards 5M more and more as time has gone on. Yet it all still keeps happening and getting worse. Just what a shame. Let me know all your thoughts below, check out the pinned comment in the description for various resources, and I'll see you next time.